All right, here is a final example of how to determine validity with a Venn diagram. Our example this time is going to be this one. Uh, here are two premises of the syllogism, and here's our conclusion. Just like always, our, our important principle that we're going to follow is that we're always going to diagram our universal statements first. In this case, the no M or S, that is a universal statement, so we're going to diagram that first. No M or S. That means that there's nothing in the intersection of the two categories M and S. That should be empty. So we're going to shade out that intersection of these two categories. Like this, very clumsily. <clears throat> let's go back to, so that's that one. So let's look at the premise now. Some P is not M. All right. Some P is not M. So that means there's something that is a P, but that is not in the category of M. So you might think, well, there's something that's uh, P that's not in the category of M. Well, maybe that means we just put it here, like this. Let me enlarge this. So that represents some P is not M, and that's what we're trying to get. Some P is not M. Now the question you have to ask yourself is this, is this right? Because on this Venn diagram, there are three categories that's represented. And if I put an individual right here, right, I'm also representing that individual as not belonging to the category S. So this says something is a P, but it's not an M, and it's not an S. Look at my premise, though. My premise doesn't say anything about whether or not it's an S. It just says some P is not M. So in order to handle situations like that, we have to take that individual and put it right on the line of the S. Right? And what that convention means is that we don't know from the information given in the statement whether or not this individual belongs inside the category of S or outside the category of S, right? It's Obviously, it's inside the category of P, and it's outside the category of M, which is what we want. Some P is not M. But we don't know if it's inside or outside of the category of S. And so we put it on the line, right? So that's the important convention that a number of people, uh, I think, weren't quite grasping. All right, let's diagram the conclusion now. Some P is not S. Some P is not S. I'm just going to uh, copy and paste this. There's something that's a P but not an S. And that's how the conclusion should look. Some P is not S. Now, <clears throat> you have to ask yourself, is there information contained in the conclusion that's not already contained in the premise? And I think the answer here is yes, there is, because well, I don't think, I know that's the answer. So our conclusion says that something uh, is a P but is not an S. There's some individual that has that's in the category of P, but that is not in the category of S, right? Um, what does what does our what do our premises tell us? Well, it says that there's something that's in the category of P, but we don't know whether it's in the category of S. Over here, we're saying we do know that that individual is not in the category of S. So that means that our conclusion contains information that our premises don't, and that means the argument is invalid. 